Let's take a look, folks. Why am I smiling when there's so much going on tropically? Because uh, really, a lot of it's going on around us, folks. So at least for the next five days or so, although we're watching the tropics and we'll keep you updated, there's nothing in a significant way to be concerned about unless you or your family are heading to the beach. There will be a higher rip current risk. We'll talk about all the variables in a moment, but in case you're just headed out the door, I wanted to show you uh, one of the nice things of the increased easterly winds we've had, especially during the day today. Notice the temperatures, 86 degrees. That's more seasonable compared to that near record heat we've had off and on through the lat latter part of May and even early June. Winds are solid out of the east northeast at 16, but we're getting some higher gusts. We'll check those out in just a minute. But let's go to the tropics and talk about what's happening uh, over those very warm waters, even locally now. Our local surf temperature yesterday and today, before the sun even came up, 86 degrees. There are many years that we never make it to 86 degrees. If it does happen, typically it's in the latter part of August, not mid-June. So that just means there's a lot of potential energy out there, and some of that is beginning to organize. Now, I want to show you the difference between the two systems. So if we're going to call our system the one to the east, do you notice much symmetry there? No, that's good. Remember, even if you don't have all the numbers, uh, the more symmetrical a system is looking, the stronger it probably is and is going to be. In fact, if you look very closely, this is what we call the infrared shot. That's where the big thunderstorms are. This is where the circulation center is. See that little gray area? That's good. As long as those two uh, remain disconnected, we're not going to see rapid development there. On the other hand, look at what's happening out over the Gulf of Mexico. So the system we're watching is down here. That is the core. But notice the colors extend all the way up to the Gulf Coast. This is one large system. But again, that is headed away from us here on the first coast. That's certainly the headline. This is our little system that we'll be watching. This is the system that's already being called a potential tropical cyclone. But let's get to some vocabulary. So this already has tropical storm force winds, winds of 40 miles per hour or more. So why aren't they calling it a tropical storm? Because the strongest winds are two to 300 miles away from the core. In fact, this is an example of where the forecast track shows you where the lowest pressure is expected to go, but the windiest and wettest weather will probably stay well to the north of where this cone is located. As long as it stays relatively unorganized, that is the strongest winds are away from the lowest pressure, we're expecting that just to stay as a tropical storm. So I think the big concern for our friends in Texas will be maybe as much as 10 to 15 inches of rain on the Gulf Coast. There's our little system. We'll see what it means for us for tomorrow. Winds will continue to increase out of the east at 15 to 25. The main concern being a high rip current risk. That's going to be for tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday. Our windiest and wettest day here on the first coast, mainly just because of strong high pressure, will be Wednesday. Uh, winds not quite as strong on Thursday, decreasing on Friday, and then winds and seas relax in a big way this weekend. We'll have